Hello everyone and welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each day a staff member will be sharing an object from the permanent collection and posing questions for discussion. Check back each day at 10 a.m. for a new look and a new chat. My name is Carrie Adkins Maris and I am the Associate Director for Community Engagement here at the Cincinnati Art Museum. As a Cincinnati native and passionate art lover, I can't pass up the opportunity to explore the Andy Warhol piece, Pete Rose. There are just so many angles to look at this from, but let's start with the artist. By all accounts, Warhol was wildly creative and eccentric. He was a painter, writer, designer, and filmmaker, among other roles. He created paintings by urinating on them. He wore a wig, but refused to admit it, getting it trimmed monthly and replacing it, pretending that it had grown. He curated an image and persona that was, and still is, curious and fascinating. Warhol was born in Pittsburgh in 1928, a first-generation American, both parents were immigrants. While he was sick as a child, he collected pictures of celebrities, drew, and listened to the radio. All things that informed his interests later in life. Andy Warhol was full of contradictions and duplicity. His studio, called The Factory, was famous for its huge parties that went on for days. But he attended Catholic Mass with his mother almost every Sunday of his life. Warhol had the winning combination of a strong work ethic and an intense drive to create. If you're an art history nerd like me, you've probably noticed the combination before. Warhol shares it with Romare Bearden, Vincent van Gogh, and Frida Kahlo, just to name a few off the top of my head. Part of Warhol's legacy includes reviving portraiture in popular culture, and the painting Pete Rose is a great example of this part of his work. How in the world did Andy Warhol connect with our hometown sports hero, Pete Rose? In 1985, Pete Rose, a Cincinnati-born baseball superstar, was a player manager for the Reds, and he was set to break the all-time hit record in Major League Baseball. All of Cincinnati held her breath while the hits ticked away that summer. I was 12, and even then I wasn't a huge sports fan, but I remember the excitement as Rose neared the record, everyone rocking their number 14 t-shirts and jerseys. Even the art museum was in on the excitement and commissioned Warhol to paint a portrait of Rose to commemorate the upcoming occasion. As predicted, Rose broke the record on September 11, 1985. Warhol had to hurry to complete the painting on time and ended up using an existing photo as a basis for this work. So Warhol never met Rose as part of this work. The portrait of Rose is a repeated image of Pete Rose in uniform in a batting stance. The image is an interpretation of a baseball card, a cultural image so familiar to us. But if Cincinnati has a current relationship status with Pete Rose, it would be, it's complicated. Rose would be banned from baseball for betting on the game in 1989 and later found guilty of tax evasion. And Warhol's life got pretty complicated soon after 1985 as well. Warhol underwent a gallbladder surgery in 1987 and died in recovery. A shock, even with known pre-existing medical issues. He was only 58. Warhol's interest in celebrities and fame coincides with Rose's fall from grace in an almost Shakespearean way. I can't imagine a more fitting way to capture the work of both Warhol and Rose. Part of the fun about learning about more contemporary pieces from the collection is that you can learn so much more about them. So if you're left with burning questions about Warhol or Rose, do some research. I promise you won't be disappointed. And here are some questions I want to leave you with. What is your favorite portrait in the CAM collection? Do you like this portrait of Pete Rose? And maybe, most importantly, do you think that Rose should be reinstated to Major League Baseball? Thanks for joining me today. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe, and we'll see you at the museum.